I'm Lori Weitzner. I am here in my studio in New York City, wishing I were out with you guys in San Francisco right now, but we do what we have to do, and at least we're meeting this way. Lisa Staprins I've known for a very long time, and she and I have a very, very special, we hope you'll enjoy, experience for you. Hello, I'm Lisa Staprons, and I am so excited to be with you here today, to be part of Fall Into Fabrics and woven together, which we all are. And Rhonda, thank you for putting this together. It is, it is really an honor to be with Lori Weitzner. I met her 17 years ago, and she was giving a talk at the San Francisco Design Center. She's inspired me so much, her layers to her work, the artisans she works with around the world, the way that she combines materials from different cultures, different countries, and really weaves it all together to make just incredible beauty. I met Lisa many years ago at the San Francisco Design Center. I had heard of her for a long time. She was a renowned interior designer doing beautiful work, but I'd never met her. And when I met her, and I know that this is okay to say because she told me it was okay to say, she was very candid with me and somehow we connected right away and she told me about her breast cancer that she had had and that how it had changed her life and equally importantly how it changed or opened up a whole new world to her on how design, how color, how texture, how pattern can really influence us, impact our lives, heal us, and just create a general overall better way of living. This is called a call to action because through our knowledge and experience, we want to treat you to an inspirational hour where you can then be really motivated and excited and inspired to go out there and take your talents and not just create beautiful spaces, but create spaces that will actually elevate our lives and our spirits and our soul. So today, to be here with Lori, I'm going to be bringing my ideas about uh, my, my work in soul and design, neuroscience and beauty and how it weaves in to Lori's color worlds. And the incredible thing about this topic is that spaces, color, environments have been proven to change our, in, in most deep, our deepest feelings within ourselves. It changes our heart rate, it changes our, our emotional being, our emotional state, and it, there's really an impact on what we create for people and how it affects their well-being. This chair, a chair, chairs in general, they affect your soul. Now let that settle in a little bit. It may sound like, how can a chair affect my soul? But it actually brings out your soul. It, a chair can have a hard shape, a soft shape, a certain color, it could be bright, it could be sexy, it could be leather, it could be some gorgeous woven upholstery. It could be so many different colors and you're drawn to it and you can't often explain why. And for our clients, we might see a chair and go, that's just perfect for them. That tells a story. So a chair, something as simple as a chair, can affect your soul. Now, what's a soul? A soul is the truest form of ourselves. When we strip away all the outside influences, all the preconceived notions of what a soul is, thinking it might be religious or spiritual, a soul is our truest form of ourselves. It unabashedly aims to identify our core. And if we can create an environment that brings us closer to our core and helps us understand who we are in our most, in our deepest, kind of most pure, truthful state, I believe that makes us a happier, healthier person. And by bringing, understanding our soul and our clients' souls and what an experience can make somebody feel, it's gonna make us more connected to that environment and it's gonna make us healthier and happier. Outside influences and how we experience an outside influence absolutely will trigger a physiological response and a neurological response. It will trigger our body's chemistry. Sometimes you don't even know, it hasn't registered with your brain yet, but you'll get a flutter in your heart. You'll have an elevated heart rate. You might get a little sweaty. You might just get excited. Then it will hit your brain and all of a sudden your brain will go, oh, wait a minute, I feel, I feel good or I feel scared or I feel like I wanna run and hide or I feel like I wanna jump up and down. The outside environment and the environment we let come inside, the environments we create inside, meaning the kind of the, the I call it more of a sanctuary, but 
that can reinforce the, the feel-good neurotransmitters. And the neurotransmitters are our body's chemical messengers. And they basically impact our soul. They, they support our soul. They nurture our soul. They, and they help us experience a space. And they, and they also help us ex make us feel differently in those spaces. Feel-good neurotransmitters are what are released when we're in spaces that bring out the best in us, that tap into the deepest part of ourselves, which, are, which is our soul. For example, dopamine, it's known as the feel-good neurotransmitter, and it's responsible for the feeling of pleasure and satisfaction. Serotonin regulates mood, social behavior, sleep, memory, and desire. Oxytocin, that's the love hormone, or it's been called that, and it plays a major role in bonding and well-being. Endorphins, the stress fighters, they reduce stress, increase pleasure and result in a boost to the immune system, which I think is incredible that an environment and the influences we let into our environment can make us healthier, take away the stress. Now cortisol, it's our body's main stress hormone and it controls our mood, motivation and fear. It's at our basic cellular level. It's our fight or flight mechanism and our reactions in the world. But if we can support the cortisol and the adrenaline in our lives in a healthy way with enough healthy triggers for the healthy neurotransmitters and enough healthy elements that bring out the best in us, that cortisol will drive us to action and give us energy. We'll be more focused. It's like anything's possible. And as an industry, we can actually have an effect on all of these things. And that's where it layers into the ripple effect of all the decisions we make and how it layers into Lori's color worlds, into the worlds that we create and the colors that we choose. As a textile designer, I always thought when I wrote a book, it would be about textiles. And although the book I wrote has textiles in it, it's really about color. I created these color worlds. They are special colors, they're unique to me, but I think that all of you will respond to most of them or some of them, and maybe create some of your own in your head once you've learned about mine. And I immerse you into those worlds, what those colors mean, how they make you feel, how you can use them to create the moods and energies that you might want or need in a space. Waterside is a world of all the different blues, and it's an unusual world because some of my other worlds, which you'll learn about, have a mixture of colors, but all the different blues, the light, the dark, the dramatic, the powerful, they all can make us feel very grounded. They're very steady. They're like your best friend. I always joke around that if a person were Waterside, they would be the one who would help you early to set up for a party and stay late to help you clean up. They're reliable, they're dependable, they're intelligent. These are colors we want around us to feel comfortable. Depending upon how you use the blue, depending upon the shade of blue, it changes the whole experience of the color. It's really, blue is one of these colors, sky, water. I love how you can have this energy of, of like blue circles and floating excitement. And then you could, I, I've also done a project where I had like four or five shades of blue in one kitchen. Now that's a challenge as a designer. How do you, how do you make it feel like it belongs and they work together? But when you do it, when you think about all the impacts they all have on each other, you can create a whole environment that's just very, um, very calming, energizing, and, and creates a real sense of where you want to be in a space. Silver light are all the cool metals, not warm metals, cool metals. They're mirrors and reflective things and sleek things. This is the color world of innovation. This is the color world where people think of things that others have never thought of before. It's about vision. It's about experimentation. And I love this world and it's really interesting because it's not an easy color world for me to use in my interiors. And yes, I feel like I'm an innovative person. So how an interior designer would use silver light is really interesting. There are the colors that just have a sense of sparkle and quiet and layered 
layered kind of, I want to say meditation, but it's energizing at the same time. So you're not going to fall asleep. You're very aware, but it also has this subtle layering. And I've done work where I, I maybe paint the walls multiple layers of tone and color. And, this, and there's, there's examples where I have clouds on the wall, but you can't quite tell. A silhouette of a hummingbird. They're usually moving so fast. But in the moment, I capture it with sparkling light and the movement of the bird stops. But you know it's going to move. So your mind's like, that bird's moving. And it just, it, it triggers something deep inside of you. In this case, it was a young uh, teenager. And we wanted to give him a bathroom that would be kind of a cool effect and kind of sexy, but also kind of like, you know, it was grown up, but it wasn't too grown up. And it was cool that, you know, mom and the designer thought this would be a good idea. And the, the, the young man was really excited about it. And then there are environments where you mix metals. Typically for this kind of, I call it innovative and, and uh, you know, we layer in with the, with the silver metals, stainless steel, matte nickel, kind of this kind of more saturated, not saturated, layered gray blue, but it's not really blue. It's more of a gray that complements the stainless steel and the metal. A little bit of warmth of the walnut and the wood tones and then the white marble. There's just this layering of this quiet state that um, makes you feel, brings, brings your, you know, these, these, were, these projects were people, especially this one with the stainless steel and the nickel. These were innovator thought leaders. They traveled the world. They wanted to come home and they wanted to feel that same sense of energy and excitement and work they do in the world. And there are rooms where you have the layers where you have, it can be challenging because you're, they want to have this calming yet, you know, savvy environment and multiple seating options where it still feels intimate. So I have, I think, six swivel lounge chairs in this room. And I do have some warm tones to complement the sparkly kind of silvery gray tones, but it's all this layering effect and thinking about what the impact of one is on the other. Garden Party is actually a delightful color world. It's all about joy and play. It's those pastel colors, but for me, they're not too sweet. And they are all about letting go. I always talk about the way Fred Astaire dances and that the way he dances is very Garden Party. It's about not worrying about things. It's about play. It's about magic. It's about pure joy, celebrating spring those fresh spring greens, for example, those flowers before the colors get too saturated. This is garden party, my garden party. Then there are the colors you just wanna smile, you wanna kinda of jump, you wanna sing. You just feel like it's gonna be okay. It's actually gonna be okay. And that's a really good feeling to create right now. Maybe not as much seriousness. It depends, once again, on the client, on, on, on kind of the call to action. Really, as designers, we, and, and as creators, and as fabricators, we're creating with all these multiple layers and knowing that that, that fabric, that texture, that material, that stone, that carpet, that light, that wood, the view lines, the space, the place in the space, where it sits on its street, are all going to layer in to create this feeling of, I am just so excited, I'm going to run up the steps to come home. Like this, this, this just sense of joy. And there are colors that bring this amazing sense of joy. It's, like a, it's almost like a vibrancy that lifts you. And you just feel, you feel like it's going to be okay. So that's a very deep emotional trigger that it's going to be okay. You're going to release healthy neurotransmitters. You're going to have a healthier immune system. That, that colors can do this in this happy, con combination of like it's like a symphony of, of colors that bring joy to you and they need to be a certain saturation and a certain layer of coloring but not too heavy but light enough and also just bring in those those uh, not really rainbow colors but and this family loved it they they had real they love color and I brought it together by having references of the color throughout the space and um, it just this there's a very lively family and they do sing and they do dance and they do play lots of instruments and I feel like the colors really celebrated that it was really a joyful joyful project night shadows is a very very serious world it is dark it is misty foggy charcoal and truffle and merlot it's the kind of space where you want to speak with someone about a secret and share it over a glass of red wine or even maybe a glass of whiskey, who knows? And it's about um, seduction, but it's also mystery. 
And I love this color world because it's a color world I want to be in when I'm trying to figure out what my next steps are. There's this saying about being in the dark and then you see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. That's what Night Shadows is about. So it's a very, very important color world. There are the colors in the work I've done that are cocooning and sultry and maybe a little sexy and kind of secretive. In this case, this client had this painting they loved. It, 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 had, it had all this kind of dark, sultry depth. And then um, I, I kind of centered the room around it and had these deep, rich colors in the wood. And then the subtlety of the warmth of the grays and then the textile and the, the hand looming in the pillows, a little bit of silk in the rug. And the, you know, you want to cozy up, maybe have a cashmere throw or just a throw wrap around you and you want to have your cup of tea. They drank a lot of tea. They were tea connoisseurs. And uh, just imagine that warm cup of tea and that kind of sense of, of you know, being anchored and, and also transcendent, but kind of in a rich, secretive, comfortable way. And there's other ways that we can do that where you just, it's really a layering of, of metals and light and dark and how you play with that. This color world is whisper. And I remember there was an ad a long time ago, if you want to capture someone's attention, whisper. Probably half of you don't even know it because you're too young to remember that ad. But there's something very powerful about things that are quiet. And whisper is all about the whites and the off-whites and the whites with a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. But they're so nuanced that you can't name them. They're impossible to name. Those are the colors of Whisper, and Whisper's about going inward. It's about your finding your intuition, your inner peace, your calm, your meditation home or place within you. It's a very centered color world, but take care, it's ethereal. It's not grounding, as other color worlds might be. So you need to find the right ways to use it. Then there are the, in my experience, creating interiors. This is an example of an ex interior that everybody can experience, and it's in, in the new Stanford Hospital. It's the center atrium where the light comes down through the ceilings, and there's this transcendent, translucent, quiet, quiet light that penetrates through the glass, and I use a lot of cast glass in my work. In almost all color worlds, I do use a lot of glass because glass carries light and picks up the light around it. It's really, really transformative, so quiet glass that picks up layers. And so how you place these things in the environment that really can whew, really reduce your heart rate, it can, it can create a sense of calm and it's gonna be okay. And there's a sense of kind of meditative quiet. But I also usually try to layer that in with a texture on a textile or the kind of free edge on a piece of wood or a hand carved element. So that that quietude, once again, I don't really wanna put people to sleep and I want them to feel relaxed and comfortable. I usually like views to nature if I can in rooms and spaces like that. And if there's not views to nature, nature artwork that supports that. So to really have a, a cohesive environment that supports that layering of meditation and quietude. A white room, a quiet room with layers of whites and a little pop. Will, and it becomes almost like, you could call it an altar, but it really I call it a moment of pause. We all need moments of pause. Reduce our heart rate, bring us to our center get a little bit more in touch with that most true form of ourselves, our soul. And, and a room can do that for you. Earthly is the color world of passion. It is a very, very provocative world. It is all of those terracottas, those spice colors, those earth tones that are really cocooning. I have to say that the first time I went to India was the first time I really experienced earthly colors. You're just so overwhelmed with all of the smells, the sounds, the colors. It's all there for you. And how you use these in a space can be interesting and important because too much of it can be overwhelming. But if you get it right, it will inspire you to follow your dreams. And that's really what this color world is about. It's about going through your life and instead of just smiling, deciding to sink. There are the rooms where you create, and I've created spaces where I have this kind of sultry, sexy, layered, a little bit warmer, um, 
Moroccan light shadow play wood ceiling just gives this layering of like you can instantaneously travel to Morocco and go, oh my God, I remember the spice markets and the rich, hot colors or the views of the ridge line and how the sun comes in through the windows and how the floors are rich and dark and red and then I then you complement it with the walls that aren't too dark because too much darkness, too much of a good, too much of one thing can overwhelm a space. You have to give it a break. You can sit in that chair in a room by a fire, by your favorite bookcase filled with all your favorite books, by the books you hope to read and you can dream and you can and you can imagine possibilities. And that room will transform you. At ease, at ease is a beautiful color world. It's all about ease. It's all the neutrals. It's the warm khakis and the linen and the warmer grays and how they all work together. And they're kind of chameleon colors because they can work with anything as a backdrop, but they can also be the main story. And what I like to talk about is they're colors that don't make you think too much. They're restful, they're comfortable. I think about napping, having a cup of tea, lying in a hammock, going to a baseball game, puppy dogs. This is all the world of at ease. I feel like it's a wheat field and wind blowing in the wheat. You just, you just feel comfortable. It doesn't compete with anything else. It's just kind of soft, but a little bit rich, not too rich, not too much color. And there's a, just a quiet calmness to these kind of spaces. It, this is an example. It was brown and dreary. It's the New York City apartment. And they just wanted that sense of ease when they came home. Whew. Just that kind of, okay, I'm home. I can quiet down now. I can be recharged. And just have that kind of calm, filtered light in the fabrics, unlined. The carpet picks up the colors, but doesn't take too much of your attention. Client's favorite photos. A little trim on your window treatment. A little sparkle in the corner just comfortable and easy. This color world is called Out Loud. Out Loud. And what is that? It is all the highest saturated colors. It's those POW colors. It's colors, to be honest, that I'm always not that comfortable with unless I use them quite sparingly. But I think there are all different ways to use them. They're all about energy. Energy, energy, and going bold and taking risk. You know, you, you want to wear that out loud color to a meeting when you really want to make an impact. It is a color world that you have to be careful with, and yet if you use it in the right way, your life can explode. And once again, it goes back to what kind of environment are you creating for who? What's their, how do you tap into their soul? And as designers, we kind of have to imagine or try to really get to what that is, to the core of it. They love bold, they love bright, they love energy. Sometimes I can consider this kind of a cortisol release, but cortisol and adrenaline with the right feel-good neurotransmitters balancing you out. You, these clients really wanted these pops of color and they had very intense, stressful jobs and they had young children and busy lives and we really brought inside outside. I brought in woods that kind of didn't neutralize but they kind of calmed that intensity of the color so it didn't just take over but it was there and it gave them the energy they wanted to go back out into the world and be their best selves. And so I, I think this layering when you have, I've had clients who want that bold, bright, just give it to me kind of color. I sometimes like in an example you just do much bigger art, overscale it, have it take over the room. Do pick up a color in there that's the brightest, most intense color and celebrate it. Take a chair that you may have, you know, warm woods in the room and just have one element just pops. And just all of a sudden there's like this burst of energy in the room, which is good for you in the right doses. And I've done it in commercial work. Sometimes it's a little bit more intense in my commercial work, but the same intense colors can really activate and activate your whole, your whole neurophysiology. And people have felt like they can focus more at their jobs and, and be happier. is the world of all warm metals. We can talk about gold, we can talk about brass, we can talk about bronze, we can talk about rose gold, we can talk about any of those warm metals. They are majestic, they are imperial, they make you feel very special. 
this color world is about enlightenment and inspiration. And what's really interesting is in my color test that people have taken, and I have so many people, 13,000 people have taken this test already, alchemy is the most popular result. And what that tells me is that people are needing to be more creative than they are actually being. Now the audience is mostly interior designers and architects, as you guys are, but the fact is that that color world draws out inspiration, it draws out creativity. And the fact that a lot of people are getting it means you've gotta be more creative. So put away the business side and just get creative. I think one of my favorite uh, projects is that kind of nuanced layer, I call it wisdom for me, it's wisdom. And, and uh, in Lori's color worlds, there's all these beautiful layered nuances of wisdom and depth, old and new. Like our ancestor, like something that can trigger memory of an ancestor, some kind of family heirloom, and how, you, like bringing an antique in maybe, or something that has layers to it, a patina, a golden light, like the most beautiful, uh, you know, there might be an experience where you saw some beautiful temple somewhere. In this case, it was a client's cold room, which is their wine cellar where they store all the foods. They love to go in the garden and can things and pickle things. And she had this beautiful old, a gold frame and it really became the center and it's it's in there it's like put an old beautiful picture frame in a cold room wine cellar and that becomes a room often we're friends with them and we share a lot of wonderful meals they'll bring people into the cold room we'll all pile in not as much right now but in general when we can all be more intimate bringing in big overscaled moroccan lights that brassy gold kind of energy to that gold light changes things it makes you just feel more connected to something that is really, um, I think it's very historical and it also moves you forward because we need our history to be also to understand how to move forward. Here's a hand carved mirror with literally with gold highlights. This is a New York City apartment. They love that energy and that layering of the antique, the new, and that really there was really a beautiful kind of sunset quality of light that, that, that made them feel like they would come in flying out, they flying in and out from all over and it really recharged them and gave them a sense of connection to you know, parts of their, their stories and their life. Fragrant Woods is actually my most favorite color world, even though they're all my children. And I know you're not supposed to have a favorite, this is probably my favorite. And interestingly, it's the color world I always get when I take my test. It is about rooting in nature. The colors are all those woods, dark woods and moss greens, and when the leaves are wet. And they are, I guess I like to say Robin Hood colors, if that makes any sense to you guys. But um, it's a world about connecting, about nurturing, about what we give as opposed to what we receive. It's about scent. It's about collecting things that mean something to us that we can feel a connection to and how by surrounding that in our lives, we feel connected and connection is what we need probably now more than ever. For me personally, I live in New York City in a concrete environment in a loft and I desperately feel like I need more rooting in nature. Fragrant Woods, bringing nature in, provides me with that. So my apartment is actually pretty much Fragrant Woods and a little bit of at ease. I also work a lot with reclaimed solid wood. I have a thing about that because I believe it has a soul. It's been around a long time. It's been touched by the human hand. It's not as me mechanized and it's, it's hand rubbed and you've got beautiful end grain and beautiful wood. This house has seven different reclaimed woods. Bring in, bring in materials that pick up the materials in the world outside. In this particular project, we have uh, floors from France, beautiful big pieces of limestone that were recycled, which I think is really important in our environments. We use materials that have a life. Another experience with colors, and, and this is a project that I did where we, from the ground up, really tall ceilings, bringing those leaves into the house, you know, the, that kind of bay leaf green, and giving a sense of, of just feeling like you feel refreshed and you feel protected, but you feel vastness. In this particular house, I felt it embodied that really well. We had a bridge in the middle of a 23-foot ceiling house that connected the bedroom wings. And then I made, I put the dining table under the, under the canopy, under the bridge. I'm like, I can't just have it floating there. And it anchored the room, but you always could look around the room and see up into the sky. It's kind of back to that idea of the cathedral effect where you feel, your mind just realizes you have so many possibilities and it fosters creative thinking. It really, 
that space was, I was so nervous about the tall ceilings, but it really worked. When you were in there, you felt connected to the, to the sky above and grounded to the earth at the same time, and it didn't feel heavy, it felt invigorating almost like you're out and you have this beautiful kind of sense of that smell of fresh rain. And I and the colors really, really picked up on their environment. I think in this case it worked. And as a designer, bringing the outside in and layering in the woods that complement, but they're different, but they all layer in, so they're actually a holistic whole. That sense of, you just feel that you're in a space that that um, it doesn't pull your attention too much one way or the other, but you just feel like you anything, you just feel refreshed. Lisa and I wanted to call this talk a call to action for a very important reason. We want to ask you guys, who are the creatives out there, who know how to create beautiful spaces that can change people's lives, to do it more than ever, to make yourselves as accessible as possible, to take your magic and your artistic talents and create these spaces, whether it's before a home space or a workspace, to help elevate people's lives, to help elevate their moods, to bring them solace, to bring them peace, to bring them energy, and to heal for wellness and for well-being, which is so important. So today, it's such an honor to be here with Lori, layer into her color worlds, and to the, to the choices we make as designers, that we can actually affect each other as a whole and change our neurochemistry, our physiology, our well-being, our sense of where we belong, what we're connected to. So it's just, I feel like the color worlds and the neuroscience and the physiology and beauty and soul, this is an incredible, incredible, powerful experience that we can create in our work and for each other and how we can layer in and all be woven together to not only change the individual client's lives, our lives, but everybody around us. Because sometimes they don't know what happened, but if we can make them happier, healthier, less anxious, especially now, it's, it's just a profound, it's a profound um, uh, honor and responsibility. And um, just thank you all for being here. I feel that we in this industry have such an important and compelling call to action. And so we hope that you will be motivated and inspired by this. And to end this, um, before we go to Q&A, which will be live. We have my nephew, who is an amazing musical composer, Michael Enright, created a piece called A Call to Action specifically for you guys. And so close your eyes for a minute, or don't. We'll have whatever you want. I don't be too controlling on this. And just listen to the music, and then we're gonna go right into a live Q&A. Thank you so much for joining us.